Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to have all of you all join us for the first talk of Beatlemania 2022. I just wanted to introduce India's Nature and uh, Beatlemania both. India's Nature is a community science initiative to help uh, uh, bring the biodiversity, climate change, and environment sciences to rural populations and uh, rural people and people from less privileged backgrounds. The idea is to broad base biodiversity information. Beatlemania is one of the efforts uh, to broad base beetle information, which we will learn more from uh, Dr. Amu. want to formally introduce uh, uh, Dr. Amol and his team and uh, I'm going to read so that I don't make a mistake. Uh, Dr. Amol is an assistant professor in the Department of Zoology, KG Sumaya College of Science and Commerce in Mumbai. He has 15 years of teaching experience with a keen research interest in the taxonomy of click beetles. Butterflies are his true passion. For more than 20 years, he has been observing and studying butterflies for their behavior. He also has around a dozen new species to his credit. He is joined here by his PhD students, Harshad Parikar and Drashti Danani. About the organization that Amol and his team represent, quite often students and budding researchers seek the correct exposure and orientation. But due to a lack of proper guidance, they get disoriented. Flabella Eco Services LLP is a venture targeting to break this barrier. We aim to provide research counseling, necessary resources, research assistance, and consultancy services through nature related activities. Flabella is an infected word from Latin meaning fan. So we wish to fan out the awareness of nature in all directions. We are very grateful to Dr. Amol and his Flabella team. And we hope that uh, this is just the start of a lot of reaching out to many fans and making many fans. I'll be sharing uh, the presentation now. Uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry for my voice. Uh, I'm not uh, having good throat today, but yeah, I will uh, go through. Um, now, uh, let me uh, just an idea to have an idea. How many of you, uh, uh, the participants here are from biological background? Um, see, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, great. See, uh, may, uh, when I, when I, yeah, thank you, thank you, it's fine. Uh, so uh, when I start uh, a lecture in, uh, let's say, first year bachelors, uh, many of the students, they say that uh, their friends have left, uh, you can lower your hands, please, yeah. Uh, uh, they, they, students, they say that their uh, friends, they have left biology uh, for two reasons. First is, uh, difficult tongue twisting uh, words and the diagrams they uh, require to draw in uh, journal okay now uh, i think it is the job of a teacher probably i don't know at what stage maybe school stage or uh, 11 12 stage or maybe at fy ty level uh, all these biological words they they have uh, meaning uh, it's not just uh, any name which is randomly given to the organism. Uh, sorry, there's some background noise. So, uh, see, uh, it is like, you know, uh, Aristotle who first initiated the uh, study in uh, study of animals or plants, I may say, study of biology, I may say. So, um, it was decided that uh, Latin and uh, Greek would be used as a official language. Uh, for biology and of course uh, general terminology we use grammar uh, english grammar but wherever uh, required we have to use biological words okay so many times these biological words um, are uh, probably a fusion of one or two or three words uh, which describe the feature or characteristic of that particular uh, uh, whatever insect or organ or organism or whatever okay so um, what i want to say is uh, I will try to keep this presentation as uh, easy as possible and uh, as uh, non-technical as possible. So let me, uh, just a minute. Huh? 
let me uh, share my screen uh, where is that yeah okay i hope you can see now uh, is it visible somebody just respond yes. vocally yes sir yeah thank you okay thank you so uh, today we are going to uh, talk something on beetles okay now um, in biology they are called as the coleoptera i think just a minute uh, where do i oops anyway okay <clears throat> uh yeah so in biological uh, language they are called as the coleoptera now as you can see here uh they uh, the meaning of that word is sheathed wing okay uh again uh, it is a fusion of two words coleos meaning sheath and pteron mean wing now uh, we are going to see what are insects but as uh, in the picture you can see the green part dark pointed part is actually a wing which is hardened uh, which appears as a hard as a shield okay and the next pair as you can see it is open here it is used for flying and now this particular feature is not present in all insects it is present in coleoptera okay so first pair is hard okay we call it as elytra or elytra okay and in english they are called as <clears throat> beetles now i could find that it has its origin in old english and uh, germanic uh, language uh, means little biter not beetle but biter because most of the beetles they have biting uh, mouth parts uh, as probably observed during those early stages and that's why the name is given okay so just a minute how do i oh yeah sorry uh just a minute how do i minimize this i cannot see top portion of this yeah we Got can it. see your full screen okay no no i want to see some you know i i yeah, I, i could do it yeah so uh, entomology is study of insects okay so uh, greek uh, word is entomos means uh, that a thing or organism which can be cut into pieces okay and that's why we get uh, english name uh, call it as a insects okay now we are not going into the detail of this kingdom and sub kingdom and phylum and all that just a, a word on phylum uh, arthropoda insects are a group or are a member of a big big largest phylum called as arthropoda that includes apart from insect a lot of creatures like scorpions ticks mites crabs lobsters even centipedes and millipedes etc now all of them they share a common character that is their appendages are jointed okay so that's why they are put in a group called arthropoda then in that there is a class insecta sometimes this insecta is also called as hexapoda hexa means six poda means legs or appendages okay so obviously insects have three pairs of legs as you can see in the Uh, diagram over here okay so body is divided into head region then thorax is the chest region and abdomen region okay now um, there is a single pair of antennae on head <clears throat> also there is a pair of wing which i have not mentioned here in characters because in some insects they are totally absent in some insects they are shed off later on in later stages of life okay so invariably um, Uh, all insects may not have wings but of course it can be a, a, a feature of insect okay now uh, amongst insect there are different orders orders means group of insects grouped together under one order for example butterflies and moths they are grouped under one order beetles are grouped under one order so there are plenty of orders the number varies but it is roughly around 30 orders and amongst that we are going to see beetles okay so yeah now uh, beetles how do you identify beetle okay many of you uh, there is a picture down there you can see uh, in the center okay now beetles can be identified primarily by their um, you know uh, very hard uh, body okay it is really hard 
you cannot crush it so easily okay uh, and antennae legs and there are so many features by which you can um, identify a beetle actually it is a very complex body form as you can see i could get one picture from uh, coleoptera dot org website so here you can see uh, on the left is a picture or a drawing of a beetle now there are different body parts which are mentioned over here so um, of course there are antennae there's a head of course you can see which has a pair of eyes then there are pair of antennae and there is, there are a Amol, we lost your audio. Green one. Okay. So, um, pro, meso, and meta. That is four, mid, and hind. Okay. So here, interestingly, some variation has occurred, and three parts are not visible. Only front part of the thorax, which is called as the prothorax, it is. Um, Sorry, my mic is playing some. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Uh, in in between, your audio is uh, getting missed. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. I I don't know what has happened. Uh, now your audio is good. The Bluetooth is dropping suddenly. I don't know for oh. what reason. Ah, uh, yeah. So I think I'll share it again and okay. So here you can see only four portion or uh, the anterior, matlab, towards the head side part of the thorax is visible and it is shield shape and it is covering the rest of the thorax. Followed by you can see there is something called as elytra or elytra. Okay, so that is actually a front pair of the wing which is hardened. Okay, and of course there are three pairs of legs you can see, and uh, of course there are different parts here which uh, probably we may not go in details of it, but uh, legs are a very crucial part in uh, insects and we can say in beetles. So you can see there are some uh, circles in this figure. They are called as tarsus. Okay, that is the almost the distal part of the legs. Okay, and these tarsus. are very important in identifying insects i have put up some pictures which i could find on uh, internet okay so at the end of the tarsi there are claws as you can see uh, over here and these claws uh, they play quite uh, you know unique role in walking climbing clinging etc okay and tarsal joints they are quite flexible and there is something called as a tarsal formula which is used in identifying beetles now please don't get uh, you know boggled by uh, this thing i'm just giving you a uh, kind of simple information because people when they are interested in beetles many beetles can be identified by photograph but you should not dare directly jumping to the species by looking at the uh, photograph okay so one of the prime feature is tarsi so which we are going to see little later uh there's a beetle called as a um, long horn beetle whose antennas are quite long longer than the body so tarsi of that beetle you can see here picture on the right side and also there's a, a black and white picture over here they have expanded uh, that segment which is definitely used for clinging or climbing on the tree or on a wall okay at the end of which you will see a clock and in the middle you will see there is a dung beetle now this dung beetle is a quite uh, unique uh, insect which plays a good role in soil uh, uh, this uh, decomposition okay uh, they are good composters of dung so they have to burrow into the dung so their tarsi you can see here they are modified for burrowing this is just an example okay beetles is a really huge group of organisms okay highly diverse okay so now when we talk of antennae now in case of insects antennae are very unique 
when you compare uh, that with humans let's say for example our nose plays um, a dual role it helps in breathing taking in air as well as smelling okay now in case of insects uh, of course beetles are also part of it so in case of insects there are multiple noses present along the side of the body okay interestingly the nose is not present on the head in insect okay so breathing is not a concern of head it is done by various openings present on the chest and the abdomen okay the antennae present on the head they play a role of smelling that's the only role they have it is also called as a tactile organ it helps in sense as well okay so this helps uh, insect or a beetle to smell their food to smell their uh, you know probable mate male or female to smell their uh, predator to smell their prey to smell flower to smell leaf to smell dung whatever okay and they are quite quite sensitive okay there are a lot of research papers lot of work has been done on electron microscopy of electron microscopic structure of antennae of uh, insects okay and it has been found that there are lot many sensory appendages present on the segments of the antennae okay now here you will see i have put a, a black and white um, drawing of different types of antennae okay so just for the reference uh, i'll go through uh, i mean you may not remember them uh, right out maybe you can uh, go, go deep and then only you can uh, you know remember so uh, elbow antennae are like bend like an elbow then lamellae is at the end of the antennae there are uh, uh, like a leaf of a book okay so those segments are broadened okay then pectinate is like uh, <coughs> there are projections on the only on the one side there are bipectinate as well okay then there are serrate serrate is like a saw when you cut a wood or something that like okay then there are bead like antennae just one after other segments okay then there are filamentous antennae one after other and there are clubbed antennae okay now we may wonder how do they help now it is really a you know a role of evolutionary selective pressure you know uh, which has helped insect to thrive for so many millions of years so each species has come out with their uh, unique design of body uh, color head wing even antennae okay so just remember that antennae in insects they help in smelling everything okay and uh, just to you know divert from beetles if you keep anything outside uh, if you keep anything open in your house some food material or you know left over apple or left over banana immediately from nowhere you get flies okay uh, then there are beetles in uh, stored grain rice you know there's a insect beetle called as the rice weevil it can survive in a closed container okay these beetles there are different species of uh, beetles who are called as the stored grain pest and they have habit of finding these grains and cereals in your um, cupboard and i have observed that they even cut open the plastic bag in which you keep uh, the the grains they go inside and they flourish there now it is their you know immense adaptability to survive in very very less quantity of oxygen it is because of the different noses present along the side of the body anyway so uh, you can look at the center picture here on this slide it is uh, the mouth parts they are separated and displayed mouth parts of a super predator called as the uh, tiger beetle okay so just to give you an idea uh, labrum here is upper lip labium down there is a lower lip mandible is like a teeth maxilla is like a part of a lower lip you can say and hypopharynx is a tongue okay so so many mouth parts are there uh, i mean single mouth has so many mouth parts uh, inside it on the right side you can see a black and white uh, electron uh, photograph of a uh, snout of a weevil or a elephant beetle okay now mouth part of that those that beetle are totally different okay so uh, 
beetles occupy almost every niche in an ecosystem and so there is a lot of variation in mouth parts as a rule uh, the mouth parts normally do not vary even uh, type of antennae do not vary in a uh, uh, in a family okay but uh, you cannot take it as a rule because there are some you know new findings which suggest that uh, these antennae these mouth parts they probably uh, are result of a evolution okay anyway so let's go ahead and let's see uh, what is mean by a hollow metabolous insect now all of you know butterfly life cycle there's a egg there's a caterpillar there's a pupa and there's a adult so beetles also go through same life stages after mating male and female uh, mating of male and female the female uh, of course carry the eggs um then she will lay eggs according to her habit some beetles will lay eggs in a dung as a dung beetle some beetles will lay egg on a leaf under side of the leaf some beetles are aquatic they lay eggs under uh, in the water uh, on a on a, a pebble or a stone which is submerged in the water some will lay eggs near a uh, flower okay some will lay uh, eggs on a wood some females like uh, wood borer beetles the female will burrow uh, chew the hard part of the uh, hard part of the wood and will she will lay eggs into the uh, hard wood or a bast or a bark of a tree okay so after that the egg will hatch depending on the moisture if it is a monsoon as we have now in india the recycling rate is fast so eggs uh, will hatch quite faster then you will get a larva okay so in case of beetles the larva is called as grub g r u b grub in case of butterfly you call it as a caterpillar okay amongst beetle amongst larvae or grubs i may say there is a lot of variation okay so it depends on uh, the family it depends on the habit habitat of a beetle but here in uh, front of you you can see uh, example is given of a kind of a scarab beetle or a dung beetle so this larva uh, probably you might have seen on television it is um, edible the people in africa even in uh, tribals in india they eat it okay now this is a c shaped larva okay scarabi form larva so this larva has legs only in the head uh, the thoracic region okay uh, the larva passes through different stages ideally five stages but it can vary and at every uh, shift over the larva will take out clothes and new clothes will be there coming in from inside okay and finally larva knows there's a biological clock inside larva will understand that now enough time for feeding now i will undergo pupation what you can see yellow over here it is a pupa now inside complete makeover of a uh, body plan is happening and uh, antennae will develop wings will develop legs will develop and finally when the pupa matures the adult will emerge out of it and what you see is a adult beetle now all of you please remember what you see a beetle in front of you on a flower on a flying anywhere that is the adult stage because people have asked me will this beetle increase in size no the beetle is adult and adult will not increase okay now each species is individual has already you know size uh decided by whatever biology of that organism so whatever feeding has done happened during caterpillar or grub stage that will probably determine the size of the adult because although there is average size you will get a variation some beetles are larger some are smaller in same species okay so that depends on again what kind of food the uh, the larva or grub is feeding on okay so this is called as a holo metabolous insect in other simple word this beetle is uh, uh, showing complete metamorphosis it passes through four stages a uh, adult egg grub pupa and again it is a cyclical process so none of the stage will resemble other stage and here the egg and the pupa they are non moving stage they are active inside but physically they are not moving grub is moving adult is of course moving now grub is feeding on something else adult is feeding on something else so at <clears throat> grub stage 
they occupy a different niche at adult stage they occupy a different niche in some cases they are found together so they occupy same niche but this is how probably you know beetles might have diversified caterpillar or young stage food is different adult food food is uh, uh, different okay so there are different varieties of larvae this is just a representational uh, picture okay uh, there are a lot many photos available on internet you can go through later on okay so uh, some beetle larvae have very long legs some beetle uh, larvae have good number of legs some beetle larvae are apodous that means they do not have legs at all okay uh, now it is interesting you can see here the beetle uh, this grub color is almost similar whereas the adult if you see it is multicolored okay now the reason is the larva or the grub here does not require to show off any color the mother has taken care to conceal or to lay eggs where the larva is safe from majority of the predators okay there are of course predators who can find them but uh, they are safe so for example look at the buprestid larva the center one the middle one okay now this larva burrows into a hard wood uh, let's say a mango so the larva can bite can secrete chemical can digest that lignin which is hard wood and make tunnels make galleries into it so it is uh, staying in a hypoxic condition means where there is a less oxygen okay its requirement are also different than the adult so eyes are not there because they do not require good eyes as that of adult they have eyes rudimentary or smaller eyes okay now look at the larva which looks like a coin it is name similarly water penny larva there is a water penny beetle which is quite a uh, unique beetle in its uh, appearance a quite uncommon beetle and its uh, larvae are found in uh, water okay now um, there are uh, different species uh, different families of beetle whose larvae or grubs they are aquatic they are good indicators of ecosystem okay if you are getting water beetles in that particular area that means their life cycle is there in that area means the water in that area is also good if water is polluted you will not get larvae you will not get uh, life cycle there okay so there are some facts of course there are multiple uh, topics on which uh, we can discuss okay so uh, all of you know dinosaurs okay so dinosaurs appeared somewhere around 220 uh, million years before so in uh, indian terminology around 22 crore saal pe okay so uh, um, insects appear much much before that okay roughly around 40 crore saal okay around 400 million years ago you get first insect so insects are the first creature to fly okay uh, of course that is a different topic but uh, uh, you know there was a carboniferous period where all the fossil fuel what we utilize now they were formed so just after that period there was a period called as the permian period just before the advent of dinosaur during that period uh, the first fossil uh, beetle is found okay i am just giving you showing you a representational uh, imprint of a beetle now more and more fossils can reveal uh, accurate age but at present it is 270 to 280 million years from now before i mean uh, before ago okay uh, during dinosaur period the floral diversity uh, also increased at the uh, end of dinosaur period flowering plants came and so the beetle diversity also uh, increased okay now coming to uh, today the beetles are found everywhere everywhere you name the place beetles are there okay all corners of the globe right from you know uh, searingly hot 50 degrees 60 degrees uh, celsius desert to minus 50 degrees uh, uh, cold desert okay of course they may not be active during the harshest of the climate but they are there okay uh if you find out feed uh, feeding of the beetle there are herbivores there are omnivores there are carnivores there are super carnivores as well okay uh beetles are not very good pollinators nothing can compete honey bees 
okay but beetles do pollinate flowers and uh, that phenomenon is called as the cantharophily okay there is a family called cantharidae which are one of the prominent uh, pollinators but amongst all insects only 5% roughly around 5% pollination is done by beetles okay uh, extreme size variation is there extreme size variation okay on the right side middle if you see i have put a picture of uh, a tilid beetle which is as small as 0.3 of a millimeter on the right side black and white picture you can see it is uh, scanning electron uh, microscope okay they are quite not visible with the naked eye okay so you have, uh, they i mean just a speck of a dust but when you see them through a microscope <clears throat> you will see something like this there is a picture in the center where you can see the hind wings they are something different they are you know like popping out like a, a branch of a tree or something they are really tiny look at their antennae as well okay very unique on the other side of of the scale you will get a titan beetle which is really you know half of a feet 6 inches long look at the photo on the right side corner a titan beetle which is uh, because of its size it has given uh, the name has been there okay and in africa you this titan beetle is found in uh, amazon and in africa you will see there's a picture of a goliath beetle which can be as big as our mango what we eat hapus uh, mango okay alfonso mango and as heavy as mango roughly maybe you know around 120 grams look at the larva it is really really you know for tribals for the predators it is really a juicy larva you know and world over uh, insect uh, food is getting importance because insects are truly protein there is absolutely zero fat okay now amongst all life forms insects are the most diverse group so picture on the left you will see there the pie chart showing more than 50% of the creatures are insect okay so maybe around you know uh, around 1 million species of them might have been identified maybe four times more still yet to be identified okay pie chart on the right will tell you the diversity amongst arthropods amongst that you can see almost a quarter is occupied by beetles there are actually big five uh, amongst insect or amongst arthropod i may say so those are actually bugs beetles uh, hymenoptera means bees ants and wasps then lepidoptera means butterflies and moths and diptera means flies so these big five comprise a big maybe you know 50 60% of beetle sorry insect diversity now when we talk of beetles 400000 species we know worldwide okay uh, approximately okay because it is really uh, a task to collate all the data and people are doing that but you know six digit number is not a small number okay they are classified into 211 families this number varies according to the research okay but 200 111 families is not a small number now those who are from non biological background family means a group of uh, beetles which show similar character they are put in one family now family x will differ from family y with variety of characters but a family x can have thousands of species which share common character okay so such 200 families 211 families are there now coming to india the data is meager okay 15 to 17000 species have been reported from india but still uh, you know uh, i don't know how much exact species count is because some of the families some of the species uh, they are just named by the looking at the photograph there are some you know over enthusiastic people who just look at the photo and identify it and that is how species are reported they are wrongly reported in uh, scientific publications so a conservative estimate from my side would be 14000 but uh, considering india's diversity of ecosystems right from you know seashore to uh, himalayas mangroves and all types of types of forest deserts this species can go i don't know maybe out of uh, 400000 worldwide you can have maybe around 100000 rough estimate but 
it is still you know daring uh, job to estimate anyway so uh, the beetles comprise almost 40% of all insects okay and 30% of all animals so there can be roughly around uh, 4 million species present on this planet no one knows okay and uh, if you look at the pie chart over here uh, in the pie chart it shows 25% of all uh, animals but uh, you know uh, ju you just see there is a mammalia written over here on the right side now that mammal includes us larger you know cats tigers dogs leopards elephants okay so what are big animals you see in africa on television so everything is there in that just small piece of pie chart rest is all you know insects so <laughs> if beetles are present everywhere and there's a lot of you know uh, scope for indians to study so there are different names uh, common names given to these beetles i will not read each and every one so for example ground beetle these beetles are found on ground primarily majority of them i may say almost all of them they cannot fly the first opening slide you saw a beetle is opening the four wing that is the elytra and flying these beetles ground beetles cannot open their elytra their wings the elytra are fused so they can run okay then there are ladybird of of course all of us know then there are uh, whirligig beetles which are aquatic they keep on you know uh, zigzag swimming on the surface of the water so there are plenty of them we are going to see photos of few of them okay now uh, i am showing photos of uh, uh, the beetles which i have uh, taken during my journey i have stopped photographing but yeah i will start it soon so here you can see there is a varied size and shape and color okay uh, there is a jewel beetle which we are going to see little later uh, in coming slides but there are other beetles who can compete uh, you know in jewelry uh, presentation like here i can uh, point out over here the on the in the middle row on the second from the right people uh, it is quite common in india in monsoon in uh, uh, rainy season and people call it as a jewel beetle but that is not actually a jewel beetle uh, some people call it as a frog leg beetle okay uh, we call it as a sagra s a g r a scientific name sagra so uh, it is called frog leg because the uh, last pair of the leg appears like a frog leg used for jumping but this beetle cannot jump okay uh, now as i uh, as i'm showing you this uh, photograph these photographs just look at the different features okay you have to look at the uh, of course size you cannot make out from here but look at the shape or a body form look at the antennae look at the leg okay now uh look at the mouth parts of course you cannot see mouth parts in all okay now here um okay on the left top corner left you can see uh one of the uh, close cousin of a dung beetle and what you see here in front actually uh, uh is a front view and those black dots they are just dots on the thorax that is not a true head the true head is down there which is much darker there are eyes and there are antennas and now antennas you cannot see because they are tucked in and they are not always out okay uh, all of you might have also heard about the tortoise beetle or tortoise shell beetle it is sometimes called the true uh, the true uh, pronunciation is tortoise beetle immediately on the left you will see a spiny tortoise beetle okay uh, just look at the beetle down there which doesn't look like a beetle okay it is a row beetle r o v e row beetle okay uh, there's a stag beetle down there you can see with um, stag you know stag is a name for a male uh, antler or a male uh, deer which has a big horns okay antlers not horns so this fellow also especially the males they have large mandibles they use of course for fighting finding food and uh, territory defense as well okay uh, on the top you will see uh, there are two uh, which are called as the weevils they are also called as the snout beetles okay uh, then in the center you will see there's a jewel beetle now these jewel beetles they are uh, favorite for collectors people collect it from forest 
they preserve them and they are sold as a souvenirs uh, across the world okay uh, the beetle on the left middle one it is called as the meloid beetle look at the antennae they are long thread like now why it is called meloid it secretes a uh, acidic substance so if you touch this beetle if this beetle is uh, beetle feels threatened it will secrete a chemical which can cause blisters on your skin okay now there's one species which is quite common in india as well a blister beetle we call it uh, the secretion of whose is quite uh, used in uh, i think contraception male contraceptions the 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 medicines are being prepared for humans okay uh, then ladybird beetle down there all of you know okay uh, now these these are super predators they are called as the tiger beetles okay uh, tigers of the beetle world or, or i may say insect world okay they cannot fly they can fly for few distance if they have wings but they are good runners they are sprinters they can run quite fast okay so when you are walking along forest path you may see these beetles okay uh, i call them super predators or i i think they are called as a super predators because they feed on predators of the insect world there are some other predators like robber flies or some other uh, ground beetles which predate on other insects on which these tiger beetles are known to feed okay these beetles have very very strong mandibles look at the antenna again they are thread shaped okay now uh, fortunately people in india are studying insects now but when i was uh, you know how negligent we are about uh, the diversity around us the beetle pair on the right side you can see it is a mating pair okay now uh, it can also be called as the azure tiger beetle okay now this i photographed in uh, our sanjay gandhi national park in mumbai and uh, in 2003 or 4 i posted it on a yahoo group that time whatsapp was not there there google groups were not yet formed so there was a big yahoo group on uh, i mean polyoptera community i just posted this photograph over there asked for an identification within few uh, days i got an email ki this is this and this species uh, i will not uh, tell you the name because uh, i mean okay so uh, this beetle was identified the person told me that this beetle is endemic to north western ghat that is western ghat in uh, maharashtra in goa and some part of the karnataka and the person who identified was from uh, netherlands i am staying in mumbai the beetle is right beside me and i don't know that it is endemic now fortunately people are, people are doing studies but still a lot of studies pending and uh, especially the beetle is a you know big range for polyopterist to you know study uh, anyway so let's go ahead so a uh, lot of beetles they come on light the beetle on the top left is called as the ant beetle because this beetle mimics like an ant okay uh, ram you can just uh, uh, interrupt me if i'm going overboard or uh, overshooting time but few slides uh, more I than Yeah, I think it's okay. Uh, all of us are just totally bedazzled and fascinated. So please, uh, <laughs> okay. please just uh, yeah, continue. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Only the question is, if you could use the pointer to point to the beetle so that we can see which uh, beetle is, yes. <clears throat> if possible. If possible. I'm not uh, quite acquainted with this. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll just try to move okay. our cursor over here. You can just see. Okay. So uh, this is called as the ant beetle because it mimics ant. now unless and until you are aware of the difference between ant and beetle you cannot make out the difference okay so i will uh, just tell one basic difference the ant will have elbowed antennae elbowed means the antennae are bent like a elbow in this beetle they are not okay one feature there are few of them okay so uh, 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 yeah the beetle in the center left is a common i think polar, uh, potato beetle or something potato weevil or something which is occurring worldwide now okay uh, now this beetle photograph i have taken on a uh, light uh, there's something called as a light trap where you put a white uh, this bed sheet or a piece of paper 
and you put a uh, brightest of the light so that beetle and uh, of course you have to use it in the night so not only beetles lot many insects turn up on that uh, white sheet okay and now you can see here that uh, i have taken close up photograph of those uh, you know beetles so you can make out really the weavings of that uh, sheet so you can uh, probably gauge or you know this uh, you know uh, estimate the size of these beetles okay now the beetle on the bottom right you can see there are some creatures on the it okay so this beetle was actually carrying some parasites on his uh, body okay so uh, there is a group of beetles uh, uh, which do not weevils actually elephant uh, snout beetles they do not have very long snout instead they have a short snout okay uh, then we have very good uh, interesting group they, they are called as the long horn beetles horn is like nothing like a horn like a cattle or something but the antennae are quite long the picture on the right side you will see it is a close up of a mango stem borer the female will actually create a crevice on a stem of a mango and then she will lay eggs the larvae or a grub they will burrow inside make galleries and they will damage the mango tree so it is a pest of a of a mango okay now look at the uh, eyes now vision in beetles or in insects it is pixelized okay just like not like as what we see like uh, you are sitting in front of a mobile or a, or a computer you can see a screen but the beetles or insects they will not see that screen but instead they will see pixel into that now whatever you see dots here in beetle eyes those are individual eyes they are fused together to form a compound eye so in case of uh, beetles insects compound eyes are present okay uh, in between eyes compound eyes i may say in between each and eye uh, each uh, eye there are presence of sensory hair so which will also help beetles to detect a movement of a leaf or a stone or a predator approaching okay and the other thing is most of the insects they can see ultraviolet spectrum which we cannot see mm -hmm. especially the pollinators uh, which can see a flower in ultraviolet uh, color so a flower will have a coloration that flower will guide beetle where to land where is the nectar which we cannot see uh, i mean humans cannot see. okay so uh, yeah so uh, on the right side entire uh, uh, this uh, vertical uh, photos you will see those are the lampyrids or the fireflies the males are quite active on the wings and the females are larvae like the females in majority of the species they cannot fly okay so um, when you are walking along the forest path you will see light down there so there is high probability that you are stumbled upon a female of a firefly now this firefly they have blinking lights by which they communicate with each other of course male and female okay and this frequency and blinking is species specific okay uh, the center picture you will see uh, there are group of fungus beetles which feed on fungi okay uh, here on the below left you will see a tiny uh, salapin beetle uh, doesn't appear like a beetle because contrary to beetle you know a beetle uh, picture in our mind a uh, hard elytra which uh, you cannot see but you need to have a trained eye uh, on on you know locating these uh, beetles these group of beetles they absolutely doesn't appear like beetle they are called as the staphylinids or the row beetles r o v e row the picture on the left uh, is known to secrete some chemical which can give uh, you know a kind of itching or blisters to your skin okay now the blue part central part is the elytra these beetles mind you can fly very well now where are the wings look at the picture down there left bottom the wings are folded super folded into that tiny uh, elytra so whenever beetle wants to fly though that elytra will wings will unfold the beetle will fly whenever beetle will land the abdomen will tuck in the uh, uh, wings into the elytra again really you know interesting uh, dynamics they have okay mm -hmm. now 
for general people uh, whenever you are photographing a beetle when you are uh, seeing a insect what to look for look for the body form mouth parts if possible uh, you can uh, see i mean they may not be possible to be seen directly in all the uh, all the beetles because some of them they put their mouth down okay so may not be visible directly from the top when you see okay look at the antennae there are different types of antennae look at the pattern on the elytra look at the tarsal formula okay now tarsal formula you may not be able to see okay but uh, again uh, same picture we are seeing there are circles which uh, demarcate the tarsi now these tarsi they are made up of joints okay now tarsal formula means um, in many publications you will find it is written tarsal formula 555 means five segments in a tarsi in the front leg five in the middle five in the hind or back so in some it is 444 445 455 five, five, whatever okay now this tarsal formula is a family specific okay so normally it doesn't varies uh, within the family okay and of course please mind you uh, if you are not biologist you cannot make out that very easily okay uh, and of course you have to look at the underside of the uh, beetle as well okay uh, many times people ask what is the difference between bug and a beetle okay uh of course there are rules i am going to concede okay but as a basic uh, differentiating points the bugs can have matte finish there are very few bugs which you know have dazzling colors on the other side beetles you will find brightly colored and glossy finish there are beetles <laughs> with matte finish as well okay another peculiar feature is antennal segments okay in case of bugs antennal segments are less in case of beetles there are multiple now you may wonder ek to beetle itna chota dikh raha hai how i am going to count the number of segments just don't count uh, maybe you can take a photo and uh, you know uh, you can uh, see that photograph later on or just uh, in case of bugs you can make out number of segments are less okay uh, yeah then uh, in majority of the bugs the head looks triangular between the antennae antennae are coming like this so in between antennae majority of the bugs they will have triangular head whereas on the uh, other hand in case of beetles it can be of variable shape very rarely it is pointed as in case of beetles it can be rounded it can be flat it can be convex it can be concave varied shape okay almost all bugs have long proboscis or a piercing mouth parts all bugs they are pest to plants there are few who can bite but majority of them uh, they are uh, pest to the plant they cannot chew also you cannot see mouth parts of bugs because they are tucked in below the body whereas in case of beetles you can make out abhi beetles aise dikh rahe hai but you can see from the other side head facing head profile you can make out mouth parts okay we wills are quite easy to identify elephant like you know proboscis okay uh side profile is uh, in majority of the bug it is flat whereas in case of beetle it is very another feature you have to remember is look at the picture uh, look at the bug with the red coloration now that is a nymph the bugs they do not show complete metamorphosis they do not have larval form they have nymph so this is the red what you see is a nymph okay you can see those black spots or black dots those are the wing buds which are going to cover the abdomen okay when the bug grows bugs become adult on the left side you can see okay now as i already told you whatever you see beetle is a adult it is not going to grow in size okay so that is the difference uh just to give you an idea how beetles uh, can occupy variety of niches uh, drashti is doing uh, she is present here she is doing a uh, guild structure of beetles in uh, sanjay gandhi national park in mumbai so preliminary study we find uh, found uh, 39 species of them and we divided them into a uh, different feeding niche so herbivore carnivore detritivore scavenger fungivore 
there are few species who don't feed at all okay uh, there are few families whose some species are carnivore some species are herbivore okay so mix uh, uh, distribution is there and on the right side you will see i have drawn some ellipse which shows how that guild in uh, beetle is intricately woven with each other so the yellow ellipse shows um, detritivore uh, red one shows carnivore but it is overlapping with other ellipse as well okay so what i want to convey here is you will get beetles in almost every niche of the uh, given ecosystem okay now lastly i would like to end uh, with this that beetles are probably the most colorful of all insects okay of course there are butterflies but as you can see here variety of uh, sizes shapes and colors uh, look at the top picture over here there's a a scarab beetle citonid beetle from i think honduras or central america which is absolutely like a mirror okay it is not a jewel beetle like but it appears Correct. like a jewel beetle okay so i have a one national geographic magazine from 2001 or something uh, the wow. photographer has taken photo from a live specimen and literally you can see a, a human like uh, you know uh, what the background noise is there uh, a human uh, into that beetle so reflective that beetle is okay now many of you you will wander into forest for uh, studying all kinds of life forms you will stumble upon beetles but what you have to do is do not collect now beetles are easy to preserve in case of insects what you see in front of you right now is a skeleton our skeleton is hidden below our flesh but insect skeleton is outside what you see is a skeleton okay so among the insect it is easy to preserve beetles but don't collect indian wildlife protection laws are one of the strongest laws in the world okay and many species of beetles they are put in uh, a category called as the schedule 1 where handling of these individuals can land you in a jail okay and of course apart from law the thing is when you pick up any individual from a forest you may think that ek hi uthaya usme kya hai but that beetle is prey to someone predator to someone so one piece is taken out from a food chain is going to damage that food chain in particular habitat don't think of a number you have taken out a individual who has a life whose life is dependent on other lives other lives are dependent on it okay so you know uh, picking up a beetle dead alive is not to be done unless you are doing a proper scientific study and unless you have a proper permission from corresponding department to collect it okay so don't do it uh, without you know uh, getting permission and there are many people i know they collect beetle and they just keep it at home acha laga isliye uthaya but don't do that we are actually experiencing an apocalypse we are into a sixth mass extinction now okay anyway so uh, i think i'll stop this is my last slide so uh, thank you very much for attentively uh, listening uh, i think probably uh, we can go over to um, questions if we have any okay thank you very much now how do i stop uh, where is stop yeah i got it Okay. thank you so, thank you amol this is like it's been really awesome uh, the reaction on the chat and uh, the patient uh, group of people who have uh, waited here and seen yeah. this uh, really super presentation all of us have i think now we are just going to go run out with our cameras and start taking beetle photographs uh, and just uh, just a minute uh, <laughs> yes uh, i should concede that uh, i'm uh, i mean i'm mean studying uh, seeing beetles for last 20 years but i still am a student of polypterology or entomology so some of the questions may be out of my you know knowledge but yeah there are two students of mine are here uh, uh, harsha and uh, drashti uh, they will be also happy to uh, reply to you because they are more connected to you know this world because they are doing phd okay uh, so thank, thank you, you. Yeah, over uh, to uh, i want to wrap up this uh, beautiful yeah. and very informative talk
Dr. Amol Patwardhan and Harshad and uh, Drashti from Team Flabella. Thank you very much for the superb talk and also the continuous chat uh, questions and responses that were happening. Um, we hope to carry this energy forward. Uh, in the coming week, there is Beetlemania uh, event. So please go out and observe beetles and any insect, any life form and post it on um, uh, iNaturalist or any other forum that you are, any other citizen science forum. Um, other beetle experts, uh, including our team here, will be happy to get back to you with more information on the beetles. We